In this video, I'm going to use statistical analysis to look at the variation in Nintendo 64 review scores between two of the biggest names in games media, IGN and GameSpot. It only makes sense that subjective review scores between two outlets should vary, but in this analysis I'll present an argument along with statistical evidence for what appears to be a fundamental difference in scoring attitudes and tendencies between the two companies. And because the real fun in data exploration is looking at individual cases, just for fun I'll also show six specific games that have such massive differences in reviews, it's as if two completely different games are being described. The real question is, was one of these companies overly critical, or was the other a little too generous? Of the 296 Nintendo 64 games that were officially released in the United States, 256 of them were reviewed by both IGN and GameSpot. Among those games, there's about a 7 point difference in the overall average review scores between the two outlets. A statistically significant difference, meaning that there is very little likelihood that this variation in average scores occurred simply by chance. This surface level difference sets the stage for an amazing range of variation across a number of categories which we'll dip into in a moment. But first, let's step back from this average and look at the actual distribution of review scores from the two outlets. First, IGN. The red box here represents 50% of IGN's reviews, meaning that half of IGN's reviews were between a rating of 60 and 84. The median review score, the middle score, was a 76, that white line there. To the left of the box is the range representing the lower 25% of IGN scores, and to the right, the upper 25% of scores. Now let's put GameSpot on this graphic. Right away you can see that GameSpot scores skewed more negative. The orange box here tells us that 50% of all GameSpot scores were between a rating of 52 and 78, with the median being 67. By the way, those dots out to the left of the graphic are two scores that are so low they are considered outliers in the dataset. The IGN outlier score is a 13 that they awarded to Carmageddon, and for GameSpot they gave a 13 to Superman 64. Strangely enough, both of those games were published by Titus Software. Now let's start to drill down and pull back the first layer of the onion and look at average review scores by game genre on the 64. What we see is that one by one, genre after genre, IGN has higher average scores across the board. With one exception, fighting games, which both outlets apparently didn't think very much of. What if we pull back another layer? and look at review scores by the major game publishers for the 64. Again, one by one for each of the big publishers, IGN had a higher average review score, with one exception again, Electronic Arts, where GameSpot does rank a little higher. Another way to examine the scores is to look from a different angle and explore the raw number of games that were scored higher by one outlet over another. Before we do that, how many times do you think IGN and GameSpot came to the exact same conclusion about a game? The answer? Just 9 times out of 256. I'd like to say that there must be something special about these games, but with the exception of Zelda, the equality of scores is likely just down to pure chance. So how many times did GameSpot score a game higher than IGN did? The answer? 75 times. Now that seems like a lot, until you discover that IGN scored a game higher than GameSpot a massive 172 times. And this last point is a lot more powerful if we see it graphically. If we set up a scatter plot where the IGN review score is on the horizontal axis, and the GameSpot score on the vertical, we end up with something that looks like this, where each of the white dots is an individual Nintendo 64 game. For example, this one here is Superman 64, a game that got a 34 from IGN and a 13 from GameSpot. Games that got similar scores between IGN and GameSpot reside in this white area here. This is the area where we would find those nine games with the exact same scores. And just from this graphic alone, at this point, you can really see how much variation there was in these scores. The great majority of them sit outside that shaded area. Now games that were rated substantially higher by GameSpot are here, in the orange area. There's quite a few dots in there but nothing compared to this red area down here, 
the area representing games that IGN scored substantially higher than GameSpot. From this perspective, it's easy to see graphically that IGN reviewers scored a lot of games higher than their counterparts at GameSpot. From yet another angle, GameSpot gave a Nintendo 64 game a score of 80 or higher just 54 times. And IGN, they awarded that level of score 103 times, nearly double the amount. Let's bolster the evidence by adding a third player to this. Let's introduce composite review scores from GameRankings.com. In order to add game ranking scores, I had to limit the scope to those games that had at least 10 review scores built into the composite score. This was to make sure that IGN and GameSpot were not unduly influencing those aggregated scores. From the 256 games we started with, we had to drop down to 189 games to introduce game ranking scores. But it's worth it. Armed with our new data, let's revisit the surface of the onion. Among the 189 games in this sample, average review scores between IGN and GameSpot are more or less the same as before. And the average composite score from GameRankings.com is in between the two, at a 73. Let's again step back from this graphic and look at game score distributions from the three outlets. This is where it gets really interesting. On this graphic, we can clearly see that relative to the distribution of the game rankings composite scores, IGN scores skew more positive, and GameSpot scores skew substantially more negative. And peeling back the first layer of the onion, even with the game ranking scores added, IGN still has the highest review score average in every category of game genre, and GameSpot the lowest. This is even true for fighting games now with this sample. Measuring raw differences? GameSpot scores were higher than the composite score from game rankings just 49 times, compared to the massive 131 times that IGN had a higher score than the composite. From the statistical evidence so far, I think, definitely, maybe, something is going on here to drive this difference. I'm not suggesting that there is something sinister going on or any other kind of conspiracy theory. I'm just using the evidence at hand to speculate that GameSpot may indeed have had stricter review attitudes than IGN. I've reviewed similar data for the Dreamcast and this pattern of review differences is evident there as well. GameSpot is consistently lower. Or I could say IGN is consistently higher. Whether or not these attitudes were implicit or explicit is beyond the scope of this analysis. In any event, let's move down to the individual game level and make our way to that top six list of biggest review variations. Think for a moment about a 20 point difference in review scores. To me, 20 points is a big difference. A 100 rating versus an 80, an 80 versus a 60, a 60 versus a 40. Those are huge differences and portray massively different opinions. Now in total, there were 44 games that had at least a 20 point difference in review scores between IGN and GameSpot. That's a lot. In other words, nearly 20% of games on the 64 had huge differences in review opinions between the two outlets. And if we drill down on that number, we see that 38 of those 44 games were games that IGN reviewed higher than GameSpot, while just 6 were games that GameSpot reviewed higher than IGN. So having set the stage, without further ado, here are 6 of the biggest review variations that I found to be most interesting. Number 6. Pokemon Stadium. IGN awarded Stadium a pretty high score, 82 out of 100. The reviewer said that it's a must-have for Pokemon fans and a great first step for the N64 Game Boy Transfer Pack. But GameSpot labeled the game as disappointing with generic RPG battles, only awarding it a 57. That's a substantial 25-point difference in review scores. And just for some third-party perspective, the game currently has a 79 average rating across 26 critics on GameRankings.com. Number 5. Doom 64. IGN called Doom 64 a competent version of Doom that delivers the action goods. They gave it a respectable 74. Usually a score in the 70s means that you might want to consider picking it up if you're at all interested in the subject matter. But GameSpot gave the game a stay away score of 48, labeling it as quote, another mediocre 64 game. So at 26 points apart, these are nearly completely opposite opinions and may as well be speaking about two completely different games. For perspective, the game currently has a 73 rating on game rankings across 12 critics. Number 4. Bomberman 64. Like Doom, IGN gave Bomberman a respectable score of 76. 
They went so far as to say that the game is, quote, just short of brilliant and has tons of replay value. This is a sentiment and a score that would likely make you entirely comfortable spending your money on the game if you were already a fan of the Bomberman franchise. But GameSpot railed hard on this one, giving it a 46 and calling it poor. This is a full 30 point difference in scores. Even Bomberman fans would probably skip a 46 rated game. Game Rankings pegs this one at a 68 across 14 scores. Number 3. Turok Rage Wars. IGN loved this one, even going so far as to say that the game was the purest 4 player deathmatch game on the 64. A surefire, kick ass multiplayer experience. They gave it an 89. But GameSpot, they called it mediocre and indicated that players would probably have a hard time still being interested in the game after just 3 days of play. They smacked it with a 58 rating, making it another game with a 30 plus point difference between the two outlets. For the record, Rage Wars has a 72 on game rankings across 19 critics. Number 2. Rush 2 Extreme Racing USA Another game that IGN apparently loved. They slapped an 89 rating on this one. The reviewer at the time said that the game featured highly tuned gameplay and it's an absolute joy to play. They even gave it their highest marks for lasting appeal, but GameSpot tagged it with a 51. They said in their review that the only thing extreme about the game was its penchant to be extremely mediocre. The difference in scores is nearly 40 points, that's amazing. Game rankings have it pegged pretty high at 77 across 16 reviews. Number 1. Cyber Tiger. The best golf game on the Nintendo 64, well executed with great golfing mechanics and fun multiplayer. That's what IGN said on the way to scoring this one an 84. GameSpot on the other hand described it as a chore to play and not even fun to look at. They slapped it with a 38 and called it bad. This is big, nearly a 50 point swing in scores. That's half the rating scale, massive. For your reference, Game Rankings has this one at a 65 across 13 reviews. Not horrible. So after seeing the evidence and the numbers laid out, what are your thoughts? Was IGN overly generous with their review scores on the system? Was GameSpot overly critical, overly harsh? Or have these consistently varied opinions merely happened by chance? Is there no real difference? Have I read into it too much? I'll leave that final conclusion up to you. 